is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Radiohead. Broadcasting live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now your hosts, Tyler Klutz, Christy Scales, and Brad Sham. Welcome to Radioheads, everybody. Happy um, Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. I have a but, pers- it's, but it's Thursday or is it Friday? It's Thursday. Uh, I have a personal uh, philosophy that I adapted uh, just this morning about Cyber Monday. Yeah. And that is if you send me a Cyber Monday email, I am automatically not buying anything from you. I'm <laughs> Disqualify yourself from eligibility of purchase Holy from Brad How would you let me up for a minute? I was I was literally at a meeting today and my phone just kept going off and someone was looking at me like hey, do you need to get those? I mean, it sounds like someone's trying to get a hold of you. I was like, no, it's Dick Sporting Goods yes. and Academy uh, and all yeah. the places yeah. that I've been. Like, yeah, no, I think good. I've deleted 50 emails <laughs> yeah. since noon. Oh, man. Exactly. It's out of control. Uh-huh. All right. So, um, so as Christy mentioned, uh, today is Thursday. So happy mm. Thursday, Tabby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> week, went, week went by fast. Didn't it, though? <laughs> uh, when you. Did you play in Thanksgiving games besides here? Yes, yes. With the Bears? uh Uh-huh, with the Bears and Texans. Um, And did you have uh, ever a situation like this where you you played the next Thursday and so you didn't get your mini buy until... No. That was one of the things that we looked forward to on the Thanksgiving game was you had the extended weekend. So essentially you had... You know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, completely off, and then you come in Monday and get your week started. And that's what they'll have next week. Correct. And that, now this is easier than last week because it's a seven-day cycle. Yes. That's why it, today's Thursday. That's mm-hmm. what we mean. And so the yesterday, yeah. while everybody was sitting around watching the uh, Eagles do the absolutely <laughs> impossible lose to the Miami <laughs> Dolphins, uh, the the Cowboys were it's it was Wednesday. They yep. just had less traffic getting to and from work, and so uh-huh. they're they're used to that. But I want to start with um, an aspect of that because this is not a in any way meant to be an excuse for why they lost to Buffalo, who I think is a better team and certainly was that day. Yeah, I thought they looked tired in the second half, and I didn't mm-hmm. think I'd seen that all year. And what it put me in mind of was, Christy, you'll help me with the year, but I believe it was 2016, Sunday night game at the Giants, immediately preceding Thanksgiving against Philadelphia, and they got kicked right out of the gym by Philadelphia. And they looked like they were two steps behind everything all day. That was 14. Was it 14? Yeah, Yeah, because it was 14. Yeah, because you were on that team? Yeah, uh, because... Foles came back in that game. Was it Foles or was it Sanchez? Sanchez, Sanchez played that game. Mark, San, uh-huh. Mark Sanchez played that game and beat the brakes off of us. Yeah. So, to me, it, it look everybody had this, everybody knew what the schedule was, but I don't think you'll ever see a team play a road Sunday night game and get back at five in the morning before a Thursday Gosh. game again. Yeah. And this team got back at about two in the morning from New England. Yeah. And playing in those conditions, I mean, it, Christie's only now thawing out from being on the sideline. <sighs> that's right. yeah. I, I'm, it's, I'm not offering it as an excuse. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's why they lost to Buffalo. Mm-hmm. But I really thought that they were tired in the second half and physically unable to mount a comeback. That was the first game this season that I did not see the fight in them that second half. And, you know, I think that got lost in, okay, is Jason losing the team? Is it a motivation thing? And you're exactly right. That turnaround is really hard, and they just they just looked slower and tired. I don't think that they were any less motivated, but, I mean, it's a hard turnaround to have. They had really one practice, right? One legitimate practice and before no that. And no rest. No, none. Because you, you get back. And then you come in at probably what they come in at ten o'clock on. No, he, it was early, he, early afternoon. Early afternoon. Okay. In the okay. Mm-hmm. So, about but, one o'clock so, but that's 11, when guys yeah. start coming in is about ten o'clock, right? Because mm-hmm. they're going to watch their film, right. get their treatment, do all that. Yeah, like practice or the official reporting time may not be till one o'clock or two o'clock. But you really okay? So I've got eight hours of sleep after a trip like that, and then that's you know 
saying, I'm not even going to see my family at home. And then you come back, get right back into it. And mentally, you're already prepping. I mean, you're prepping for Buffalo on the way home from New England after a really tough loss, really bad weather. And then you got to go right into a short week. I mean, that's it's a challenging schedule. Traditionally, guys, I think the NFL could do a better job of, okay, hey, let's plug in a Saturday game. Whoever's playing, whoever's playing Thanksgiving, play Saturday. And then give you an extra day at least, mm-hmm. right? The, but the hard part is, or at least play an early game. Require and, it to be early, right? And the, I don't know. The hard part is, is Thursdays are such a regular thing now. Right. Then, then you use that all year, that excuse all year. Yeah. And the, and the thing about Saturdays is the NFL is not going to do that until early to mid December to not conflict with, with college, college football. football. Right. So, yeah. so, but did it look to not, you on the sideline like they were tired it, in the second it, half? It did. I think what was frustrating about it is the thing that you look at the previous five losses and it's been so hard to get a handle on this team because it's like you got to get off to a good start they keep putting themselves in a hole where they come out and have a fantastic drive Great to open the drive. game score a touchdown and then uh and really played well in the first quarter the defense did all right too mm-hmm. and it was the uh middle of the second quarter on but yes they looked uh sluggish in the second half but by that time I, it buffalo just had that momentum the the biggest play in the game and it was right before the gadget play where john brown the wide receiver on the double reverse throws the touchdown pass Uh the play before that is when josh allen recovered his own fumble on fourth and one and it was all downhill after that you could feel sometimes when you're on the sideline you feel the building everything just changes and i thought the cowboys fans were pretty dead after that of course they didn't have much to cheer for but that's when the bills mafia when they really uh, came alive but you could just feel everything change after that play it was Uh the buffalo bills that made the catalytic play even though it was recovering your own fumble Uh not the cowboys and and christian covington i can still see the picture in my mind of him he the ball was he was laying on his stomach as you can see right there and he had bodies on top of him and the ball's coming right to his face yeah but he's he can't he can't recover and, it with his face and, and, and Jalen was looking at it and not going you know it's like why didn't you jump on the ball uh, you know I couldn't really see that until uh watching later at, at night the replays couldn't really see that part of it from the sideline but it's like everybody stopped except for Josh Allen and then when yeah. you throw in a bad interception and a couple of missed field goals that are psychological backbreakers yeah you get a result like that and and so now bring us the player's perspective Uh i'm sitting at home sitting at my desk working trying to you know start getting ready for this game thursday and and the scores keep coming in from miami and when miami actually beat philadelphia i almost almost felt like the cowboys had won a game Uh what's it like for a player I mean, they were here working, so they they didn't know right away. Yeah. So what's the what's the media answer from a player? Is that we can't worry about anybody yeah, else? Yeah, right. We control our own destiny yeah. and all that. But with that, there, there's two things. One can come hope that okay, hey, look, like we had two two losses that uh, you know obviously not great for us. Thankfully, they weren't uh, conference losses. So that helps us. But, the, you know, there's two things. You can have hope. Okay, we're still in this. We're still in the driver's seat. Or you can have – what's the what, – you could be – False, le, false le, hope? Yeah, well, <laughs> le, like lethargic, right? Oh, you become yes. complacent mm-hmm. in that, mm-hmm. oh, okay, well, it is what it is. Like, we're still in the driver's seat. Like, you can say the same thing two ways, right? You can say it like, okay, good, we're still alive, let's go. Or you can say, good. We're in the same position we were last week. So there's two different perspectives, and that's where the the leadership of the team, and I'm talking about players, yeah. that's where the players have to step up and instill a sense of urgency in the remaining four games of the season because they are all must-wins. Because if we win and then go into Philly and don't do what we are supposed to do, Philly then can take that spot from us. So you have to say every game is a must-win. I know we're one week at a time and focus on this week, yeah, 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 yeah. But you have to have a sense of urgency because how you prepare today has an effect on how you play on week four well, that's or the what, fourth week, the last week of the season. That's what I loved about Dak today. Again, today is Thursday by Cowboy mm-hmm. standards. And so Dak usually speaks with the media on Thursday. So we just came out of the locker room an hour ago. And I loved what Dak had to say because uh, he's answering the same questions about how you get together and, you know, execution, all that. And he says, talk is cheap. 
And yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that because we are so tired of yeah. hearing the, oh, we just, we're just we beating ourselves. We need to execute better. I just want to gag if I have to hear it one more time. And so I was just happy to hear it. You know? and, yeah. and Dak's a stand-up guy. You know? yeah. Now he's going to say politically correct things, but I just thought that was – it was the perfect timing – to hear yeah. that today. And he also said, and so for the young guys, you know, it's time for me as a leader and the other leaders to show those young guys, okay, follow us. This is how yeah. we're going to do it. Yeah. Because here, here's the deal is you, you picked a profession that is really hard. It's really hard to get wins on a weekly basis and to be able to stack those wins up. But here's the one thing that I would say I was a little bit disappointed with watching that game is your leadership, the Dax, the Jasons, the Shawns, the Jalens, the Demarcus Lawrence, the guys that are touted as leaders on this team, when that flatness started in that second half, that's when there needed to be some emotion. There needed to be some accountability. Or there needed to be something going on on that sideline. And I don't. And I'm not comparing this team to the mid late or the late '90s Cowboys, but I just watched Troy Aikman's True Life, right, and kind of his his way out. Which, by the way, you did a spectacular job on that. Nice. Um, but he was just talking about, okay, look, there needs to be some accountability, and it can't come from the same person every single time. There needs to be a group of leaders that come together on the defensive side, on the offensive side, and then someone that can pull everybody together. One thing I haven't seen at all this year, and maybe just because TV copy didn't show it, when have you seen the entire team come together and say, look, okay, we've got one quarter left. You better strap it on because we're coming after these guys, and we're going to leave it all out on the field. I haven't seen that from the team. And that's where I, I think our senior leadership on this team, not coaches, Players have to step up and be accountable for this. Yeah, it's it's happened a couple times on defense. I can think of a few times, but at least twice it's been Chris Richard bringing people up. I've seen yeah. Demarcus bring people up. Hadn't really seen it um, on on offense, but yeah. it's interesting because you talk about the veteran guys. It was Michael Bennett who was yelling in the locker room after the game in the post game locker room, and it's interesting. Of course, he's got a fresh. Perspective, perspective, right? Being yeah. here for just a month, and and uh, you know he sees the talent on this team, and he knows what it takes. Um, you know, with a championship, he's won one. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if they follow that lead. I and uh, uh, Michael's a m- mercurial kind of guy, but I think that players will listen to him because yeah. of the success that he's had. That's right. Um, one more topic. We'll take a break. Um, how many? This is a, what a horrible question this is. I would hate for anyone to ask me this question. Okay, I'm starting what, to get nervous. Yeah. How, how many teams have you been on where the coach got fired or not re-signed? Um. Uh, Cleveland. Yes, Mangini. So I came in with Mangini. That was the only one because when I left Chicago, Lovey was there. When I, uh, Kubiak was still in Houston, uh, Philbin later got fired. But the only transition that I that I have been a part of was that Mangini to Shermer transition there. But it was over an off season. So um, my observation is that some some coaches are over their head. And my personal opinion is that Jason Garrett's proved he's not over his head. He no. may not have won enough to suit people, but he he's not over his head. No. So when players are about to get a coach fired, how do they feel about it? Do they know it? I think you do. I think you do. I know the last few games of the season, 2010 in Cleveland, there was just a feeling, right? It was... It was, and you know what everybody's saying. Yes, outside. yeah, yeah. I've got a forty-five minute drive now that that I get caught up on, uh, on all the talk. But um, well, I yeah. got some advice for you about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Listen yeah. to Cowboys podcasts on yeah. DallasCowboys.com. Yeah, you don't need to be. <laughs> but uh, you know the 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 pers- from a player's perspective, um, I think I think you're you're going to see the the heart of a team in a situation like this um you know in in 2015 when we were really really struggling right uh you know coach garrett had just signed a new contract you knew he was probably going to be there the the next year Um, but there was still an accountability that we did owe jason more and we could have put more out there um yet we lost a couple key players that year but we owed him more. And there is that sense of devotion to our leader, right? And he is our leader. So you're going to see the heart of the team. And I don't necessarily say they, uh, you know, Jason has lost the team or this, but you're going to see 
what Zeke's heart is. You're going to see what Dak's heart is. You're going to see what Jalen's heart is. You're going to see the guys that are going to, are the future of this program. If they're more worried about, okay, we're worried about us right now or we're worried about this team and this organization. Because ultimately, this team should be fighting for a goal much bigger than themselves, and that means sacrificing yourself physically, emotionally, statistically, it doesn't matter for the betterment of the team and doing whatever you have to do, whatever that is. So we're going to see a lot in these last four weeks because when it is on the line, are you going to step up? Are you going to prepare? And then are you going to go execute? So this is going to be a tale of what this group, this core group is going to look like over the next few years. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back and look ahead, beginning to look ahead just uh, two days from Thursday to Sunday, <laughs> three days for the Cowboys and the Bears with Tyler Klutz and Christy Scales. I'm Brad Sham, and this is Radioheads. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Ready? Okay. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. Cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Back to Radioheads. With Christy Scales and Tyler Klutz, I'm Brad Sham. Thanks for being with us as the Cowboys today are uh, celebrating Thursday. You think it's Monday, but... And later on the Cowboys Radio Network, it will be Monday when we have the Cowboys Hour with Joe Looney and Kerry Hyder. But um, but for the players and the coaches right now, it's Thursday. So they are winding down their week before they go to Chicago. Another one of Tyler Klutz's former addresses. <laughs> it's hard not to go to one of my former teams. <laughs> what, 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 was, what was it like? I mean, that is such a historic, yeah. traditional yeah. franchise. Yeah. What was it? It like and I'll say I'll say this. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find outside of Lambeau, I think there would be a harder place to or a better place to play in September than Soldier Field. After that, don't want to play there. But I <laughs> like a, a NFL venue, I don't believe that there is a better um, stadium to play in than Soldier Field as a as a uh, home team or a visiting team. Wait, even after the renovation, after the UFO yeah, landed me, on top of the from Parthenon? From the inside, though, from the inside, you still have that feel. You mm-hmm. still have that sense. And, you know, it's a long grass. It's it's always just really nice. It, the weather is always really pretty nice in September, October. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I love playing in that stadium. Uh, it's a good city, good fans. They're pretty loyal regardless. I mean... You know, they, okay. Here's the thing: is they're people, passionate. They are, and and you know, people always give the Cowboys a bad time for living in the past. Go to Chicago and ask them about the '85 <laughs> Bears. They are still the biggest celebrities in the entire city. Absolutely. But uh, no, it's a it's a cool place, and there's there is a cool factor to playing Soldier Field in December. There's always inevitably a bad weather game. I'm looking right now, and it looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Actually, yeah, we're Christy, catching a break. Christy, by the way, could tell you everything about the weather three days out, and she is delighted at the yes, forecast. This yeah, it looks should be a high. Nice. It's going to be. 
in the mid 30s uh, to upper 30s perfect. by the time we kick in off. In fact, I'm going to interrupt our look ahead to this game to yeah. take advantage of this opportunity. To let Christy tell a couple of stories about being on the sideline in. 20, what 13. year was it? 2013. 13, okay, you remember gonna, that game? I'm gonna, I'm that was gonna my first game as a, as a cowboy. Was yeah. it your first game as a cowboy? my first game as a cowboy. Yeah, and actually I remember when Tyler came, because I knew that he had played in Canada uh-huh. and had played in Chicago, and you may not remember, but me uh, sitting next to you at your locker yeah, trying oh yeah. to get ideas yep. on how to stay warm. But Kyle, our producer, Kyle Yeomans, Kyle, I'm getting ready to hold up yes. this picture. This is pregame. Two and a half hours before kickoff, where it's me and the Soldier Field security guards <laughs> roasting marshmallows on the sideline at Soldier Field. Which Christy brought. The security uh, yeah. guards were not. No, no. Um, so, so these are the big jet heaters that you see on the sideline. Uh-huh. Any, any cold weather game, any venue is going to have these. And so for years, I've unless seen. Unless you go to Fresno I've State. I've seen Witten, unless it's Fresno State <laughs> or College Station yeah. or something like that. But the players always warm their hands around there. And yeah. I always, in my head, I'm kind of singing Kumbaya. And I thought, man, it, I you get that feel because it's, like it's, it's a it's a it's a, a huddle right there, right? It and is. they make like a They're U. They're all gathered around oh, yeah. like a campfire. And I've always thought, could you roast a marshmallow? And so um, I knew it was going to be awful for that game and that I would be the only fool out there doing mm-hmm. my pregame reports that the uh, players and coaches would be inside. And that was the case. And the big, tough security guards of Soldier Field who um, – uh, I gathered them all around, and here's the key. The key for anything to get people on your side is to share your food. Yeah. And so I would roast the marshmallows, and they would eat it. And so then it got to a game where I gave them my stopwatch, and we were timing how, how quickly could... we could roast a marshmallow. And so the unofficial record, um, I'm going to have to contact Guinness Book of World Records to make it official, but uh, you want to take a guess on how long it takes to roast a marshmallow? On we, we did several, so it took a Mm, 37 seconds. Six seconds. I was six. I, I honestly got I was going to say six seconds. Six really? seconds. Really? Without burning it, you know, without. But anyway. I tell you uh, what, my was, hamstrings have been really, really close to that thing. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that. Uh, but, wow. but it, it was so cold for that game, and Tyler can uh, uh-huh. attest to this. The uh, guys, the trainers and yeah. the equipment managers that are on the sideline that have the Gatorade bottles, yeah. those green Gatorade bottles, they were holding it in front of the jet heaters because yeah. the water was frozen in the Gatorade cups and it was frozen yeah. in the Gatorade bottles and they were trying to keep it liquid so they could run out there and give it to the players. Mm-hmm. Um, it's That was awful. It was officially, it was eight degrees, which is the coldest regular season game mm-hmm. in Cowboys history. The coldest all time was the postseason game, the Ice Bowl. Yeah. But it was minus seven uh, wind chill, wind chill yep. at um, at kickoff. Yeah, and and that, the psychological game that was played against us, right? So first of all, that week going into it, uh, Joe DeCamillis, who had come from uh, Dallas as a special teams coach, went to Chicago. He made some comments in the media that Dallas was Hollywood, and he made all these like. So we were fired up, right? And then we get out there. And it is freezing. And we'd had the cold week leading up to it. So it was in the teens here in Dallas, and we'd had that snowstorm. And so we're like, oh, we're ready to go. We practice outside. And then we get there, and we're like, this is way colder. And I was like, I told you guys, Chicago is just different. And then the Bears come out with no shirts during warm-up. Brandon Marshall coming out with a cutoff shirt. And linebackers, no shirts. And we're like bundled up. Half the guys didn't even come out because it was too cold, and they didn't want to you know, get tight. And, uh, yeah, that was a really tough game to play. In. And they scored 40-something. But was it Luke McCown or it was Josh, Josh McCown? Josh McCown. So, and the other thing is, yeah, Jay had gotten hurt. And I, I came in. So uh, Josh came in Thanksgiving of 2011. Um, and we played in the UFL together. I mean, long story. But Josh, great guy. But he comes in. And, I, and everyone's like, okay, Jay's out. Josh. I say, listen, Josh leads that team better than Jay ever could or will. So you should be more worried about Josh and they and that was gosh man that was I think he had 600 yards passing yeah, or something that crazy. Day. The, the, they, they final was like 45 to 27 or yeah, something yeah, like and was that was crazy. the thing there was so much scoring that it was kind of a long yeah. game and it's like please get us and out and we of ran here. the ball really yeah. well I think yeah. we had like 150 yards rushing that yeah, game statistically it yeah, was it looked exactly, pretty pretty exactly. good but, but yeah that that was a that was a cold game that was the second coldest game I've played in but. What was the coldest? Was it Edmonton? Winnipeg, Manitoba. Winnipeg. Yeah, now, Edmonton game. Eskimos, they play indoors. No, they no, do not. No, it's outdoors? outdoors. Yep. Okay. I yep. guess I'm thinking of the Commonwealth big mall Stadium. in Edmonton. Yep. Home of Warren Moon. How how cold was Winnipeg when you Winnipeg was 20 below. Oh. Yeah, so it was... Uh, 
oh gosh, it was like three degrees and then wind chill. It was windy too because the planes up there were bad. But the problem there that made that game even worse was that they plowed the snow off the field the day before and not the day of. Oh, so because, it refroze. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, acts like a blanket. Uh-huh. And so then they plowed it and it was literally like we're playing on this table. Wow. So And that was the first time I ever saw a team hand out liquor before you walked out to the field. There was a bottle of Jack and there was a bottle of vodka. For the players? Stuff. For the players. True what story. What about for the sideline reporter? I'm assuming that they have their own. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's every really? game. Really? Yes. They yeah. handed you liquor. They, it, was, it was on the training table. So were you guys know, doing shots we're, before? We're, well, yeah. You could take one pull off of it and then you walk out. So it's not like they were you know, like, hey, go ahead and drink. But Canada's just a little more lax, right? But it was <laughs> and where guys <laughs> coming back around to the back of the line and going <laughs> through again. Oh, oh, oh forgot my gloves. Forgot yeah. my gloves. <laughs> That's but, funny. No, and, and I'll say this because I saw it and guys were doing it before warm-ups and I was like, that's insane. And I'm so like business. And when I'm at football, like I check in like two days before a game, like don't talk to me, don't be around me. My preparation starts. And so I'm like, what are you guys doing? And I went out for warm ups and I almost died. And I came back and I was like, okay. And so I tried it and it all it does is just take the edge off. So it's not as much of a bite. But it was it was wild. It was it was a whole nother level. Yeah. Which one was crazier, Tyler? Was it the Bears warming up shirtless in the Chicago cold or the liquor in the Canada? The cold? liquor was that was more because I've seen stuff like whenever we'd play Boise State, they'd kind of do the whole same the same thing. Um, but the liquor, I was just like, this is insanity. Yeah. Like and in Canada, though, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. If you they know, would, it's, if, it's Saturday. If Saturday. they would advertise that, they would have a longer line of people <laughs> trying to get into the Canadian Football well, League. Well, you know, the old thing, the psychological part. That was the old stories. And Brad, you can maybe speak to this. Back in the '70s, with Bud Grant and Old mm. Metropolitan Stadium up in Minneapolis, where of course that was yeah. outdoors yep. and it'd be super cold, and they would put a thermometer behind the visitors' bench mm. so that the visitors were well from Miami See, or yeah. Dallas. It's like the well pink aware. locker room. Yeah. Exactly yeah. like the pink locker room. And the Vikings were not allowed to wear long sleeves. Yeah. So yeah. they come out. Now, uh, I still to this day have not worn long sleeves for now, a game. Now, did, did you do the new skin or do any Vaseline. of that spray? Vaseline. No, Vaseline. Yeah. Okay. So you do Vaseline. So you do like rubber surgical gloves under your gloves. And then you Vaseline on the arms. The Vaseline breaks the wind. So it acts as like a layer. And it also makes the fullback hard to tackle when he's. Yeah. Uh, are you? Are you reaching are, into your bag to show I, I us am. some of your supplies I for am. this yes. week? Yeah, this is uh, Tyler and I have been promising for weeks to yeah. share handy dandy tips. Now, yeah. this is good not only for you're going to a high school playoff yes. game, but you, say you've got your kids or grandkids soccer, or you're going to college. This is good for any time mm-hmm. that you're outdoors and it's going to be cold. So this is for this weekend or Thursday that I'm taking. There it is. There we go. So. My husband's fishing socks that are warm. So good socks. Okay, yeah, so, good socks. So the two areas you have to address first and foremost is Feet. is your fingers and your toes. Yeah. Because then those are obviously your extremities, the least amount of blood flow. You have to take care of those. So good socks are key. And, and then talk about underneath the socks. Yes. Yeah, so the main thing, the, when I first started doing this, I had heard Bob Lilly tell the story of he didn't suffer frostbite on his toes as badly from the ice bowl as like Jethro and some mm-hmm. of his teammates because he had do- done the old hunting trick yep. of wrapping his feet in plastic. So I used to use just some saran wrap or glad wrap. Mm-hmm. But the problem is your feet sweat. Yeah. And so that's the problem is they're wet from sweat. They may be dry from uh, you know, rain or snow, but they're wet from sweat. So what you need is uh, powder or spray yep. to keep your feet uh, dry. Yep. I got the spray idea from Clay Matthews when he was with uh, the Packers. So that's the thing. Now, yep. this is bag. This was actually from the New England game. And it's because I forgot bread bags. Yeah. All right. This is actually the, the laundry bag. The other one to bag. do is go to the grocery store and get the bags, the produce bags, the because pro- it's a real yes, thin. Those. That's, thin that's what we use. So, did you do it straight over your skin, or do you do it between I go, sock you go layers? Sock, 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 bag, bag sock. sock. So I do sock, bag, sock, and uh, again, that's to keep your feet uh, dry from rain or snow. So that's uh, very helpful. Now, this is the best thing that for me. It's these Thermacare, or you can do uh, off-brand, um, you know, cheaper, generic things. But these Thermacare heat patches, think of, you know, like your grandparents. They got arthritis, and they're always sore, and they put on those heat patches. Yep. It's the best thing ever. So for this particular game, the minus 7 wind chill, 
I had 17 heat patches on my body. <laughs> and uh, my chest, my back, my belly, my lower back, my thighs, my hamstrings, my arms. But my forearms were too skinny. So Ted, our radio engineer, gaff taped the uh, heat patches to uh, my arms. And then the other thing is people say, well, you use the little uh, hand warmers, right? And that's okay, but here's the thing. It doesn't work for me wearing headsets on the sideline, but this is a great trick for all of you to learn. So you, when you're wearing your cap, right? You Product take, placement. You yep. take the – Rich Passaccia gave New me this cap hat. Uh, their former <laughs> – so you take the hand warmers – and I'm going to leave them in the package for now, but take them out of the package when they get warm and you stick them here in the fold of your hat and it keeps your ears warm. Yep. It's a great trick. Uh, Dr. Dan Cooper, the Cowboys noted uh, orthopedist, uh, taught me that trick. So there are all sorts of little things that you can do. But heat patches are really uh, the way to go because they really do last for like six to eight hours. And yeah. I just remember leaving that game uh, when it was minus seven wind chill at kickoff and getting on the team bus. And I was just drenched with sweat because those suckers were still working. And I was just – it was – it, it was good. It now, if good. any of that will help somebody block Khalil Mack, they could be in very good shape. And we'll talk about that when we come back with Christy Scales and Tyler Klutz on Radioheads. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. What's that spell? So, so. Are we going to win? Not if we play like we cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. OtterBox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. OtterBox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And OtterBox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce grab. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation tumblers at OtterBox.com. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this... the Seat Geek app and let's go. Seat Geek. Hey Cowboys Nation, this season when the Cowboys win, you get to experience the sweet taste of victory because if the Cowboys win, the next day Duncan is offering a free medium hot or iced coffee. So don't just celebrate the Cowboys success from the sidelines, head to Duncan and treat yourself to real victory because this season Cowboys fans aren't only winning on game day, they're winning the next day too with a free medium coffee. Cowboys Nation runs on Duncan. Excludes cold brew. Limit one per guest. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Back to Radioheads. Welcome back to Radioheads. Brad Sham with Christy Scales and Tyler Klutz. The Cowboys are uh, leaving on uh, Saturday, which this week comes on Wednesday, mm -hmm. for their game with the Bears in Chicago on Thursday night. And two teams at 6-6, six and six, both of them um, disappointed with how they have performed, and so it'll be a very interesting game. Fans in both cities are down on the teams, uh, and yet it could be a very even matchup. So um, what, what Tyler Klutz, what area of this Cowboys team are mm -hmm. you most looking at to see if it steps up and grabs the leadership of this game and takes over and says, here's who we're going to be tonight? Yeah, so uh, you know, first and foremost, I think it's special teams. Special teams this late in the season is a huge deciding factor, especially a Thursday night game. There's going to need to change the field position at some point. So special teams has to turn it around. They have to make an impact play, whether it's a great punt, uh, whether it's uh, a blocked punt, whether it's a good return. I'm not saying we have to return anything, but there has to be an impact play that completely changes the feel of the game. So special teams is one. But two, I've got to see these linebackers be who they were hyped up to be, and I haven't seen it. 
and I've got to see. <sighs> I've got to see if that if the running back makes it through that first line of defense and our defensive front that these linebackers are going to come in and fill it and it can't be Sean on every play. He can't I mean he can't be everywhere and do everything. So I need I, I need to see Jalen come up and be a force. I need the coverage by the linebacker group to be on point because uh, Tariq Cohen is a good back and he he can do a lot of different things. He doesn't get all the attention that he did maybe a couple years ago, but he is a good back and has to be accounted for. And these linebackers have to shut that down. And then I, I've got to see pass rush. Like it can't just be Quinn. I mean, Demarcus has to land, has to be there, and you know, with Trubinsky and his struggles, they're going to try to move him around. They're going to try to play action, boot him out, throw on the run, get outside. We've got to have contain. We have to. And you know, here's the thing with this defensive line that that I think we've struggled with is is we've bought into Marinelli's idea of penetration, 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 right? And so our defensive, or at least our edge guys, are getting up the field, right? problem is is there's those gaps back behind them and that's where those linebackers need to fill it so if if demarcus and robert are going to penetrate off the edges or michael bennett or whoever we've got in is penetrating these backers have to fill those gaps and they have to fill it downhill and fast um the um injury report i was just looking at just came out so uh Randall Cobb didn't practice because of an illness yeah. today. It was bad news today when I'm eating lunch and the team is practicing outside and there's Randall in line for the salads. It's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's uh, a little early. You know, he's got came, <laughs> came over and just stirred your salad yeah, with his fingers. It's not so good. Uh, he's got 72 hours to uh, yeah. to feel better, hopefully. Yeah. But I have a feeling uh, that they'll play without Van Der Esch and um, uh, Heath. Again, and yeah. an, and Antoine and Woods. Antoine so think, Woods, who think I about thought, that up the middle. You yeah. know, up the middle, we were yeah. weak last week. We were yeah. without our starting nose tackle. We were without a very good linebacker. We were without our starting safety. So one thing that that they did was blitz more last mm-hmm. week. Correct me if I'm wrong. They had four sacks. Yes, three of them were by defensive backs. Mm-hmm. Um, do they need to get more creative defensively and play in in ways that neither Rod nor Chris Richard would most prefer to play in order to be effective given the personnel? I don't know. I don't think I don't think you have to reinvent the wheel for the Chicago offense. I don't think that they're as dangerous as um, you know, as Buffalo was with the with the backs that they had and um and obviously, Allen is a great quarterback that can do a lot. But I, I don't think that they're as dangerous as, as we need to be. I think we just – I know that everybody in the media is, and all the players are saying, we just need to execute, we just need to execute. But we just need to be gap sound. And we need to have integrity in our defense. And, you know, we've got we to have our safeties come up and fill where they need to fill. But we, we, need to, we need to be able to, as a defense, we need to be able to put pressure out of our base, out of our base packages and not have to bring in Xavier Woods or Jordan Lewis or Cheeto to come and do a corner blitz or a nickel blitz or something like that. And I'd like to go back to what you were saying, Tyler, about special teams. Did you ever go against Patterson? Cordero Patterson, yes. because yeah. he he's leading the league in kickoff returns this year. He has a yeah. hundred and two yard one already uh, this season. But it, it seems like Chicago going back, whether it's Devin Hester, and that that is an interesting dynamic in that stadium. I I remember very vividly when the Cowboys would play there, and mm-hmm. Devin Hester was the returner on punts. The entire energy of the building when he would lit drop back, up. it was lit up, and it was even more. Than when Deion Sanders at Texas Stadium, when Deion was returning for the Cowboys, but you could just feel the buoyancy of the entire I'm, place. I'm telling you, and, and I and I got to block for Devin for the 2011 season, and he had, gosh, he had six touchdowns on special teams that year, but two or three of them were called back. I think we had two against Minnesota that were called back. A kickoff return for a touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown that were both called back. But, I mean, that spark, right? That's what gets the defense spark. That's what gets the offense start. Imagine as an offense, which we don't do because what our average drive start is inside of it, our 15. It, it's it's the worst in the NFL. Yeah. It's, it's actually overall, I think it's a 22-yard line. Okay. Keep talking. I've got yeah. the numbers here. Yeah. I'll find so, it. So uh, imagine the energy that the offense can feel Phil and saying, okay, our special teams got us to the f- their 40-yard line. So yeah. we've got 40 yards to go. 
Yeah. I mean, that th- 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 what that does to an offense and the energy and the and and the perkiness that that provides. I mean, it's really hard to replicate that. And so, I mean, special teams has to change the field, yeah. has to change the field and put these guys, because here's what we need to do is we need to run the ball. We need to stop being something that we're not. I mean, we are, yes, we're the uh, uh, one of the top passing teams, but we are built to run the ball and we still need to do that. And we can't just be the passing, the passing team that we want to be, because the run has to be an important part of who we are, especially in a colder Evening, night game, we have to be able to run the ball. The uh, statistic is uh, pending the uh, Mm Minnesota-Seattle game tonight. The Cowboys are 31st out of 32 teams. Oh, good. We're not last anymore. No, in the average starting field position, receiving a kickoff. Mm -hmm. After receiving a kickoff, the average is the 23 Okay. Short of just over the twenty-three yard line, and, ju- and just to put that in perspective, when when the Cowboys played at New England, the Patriots were number one, and it was just beyond the thirty-five yard line. Yeah, so, by the so way, that's one and a half first downs yeah. that they're getting a head start. Yeah. The Bears are third in the league at that uh, and, statistic. And, and, they average starting now; it's only three yards. They average starting at the twenty-six point eight. But think of the think of the individual plays that had to happen to get you to that three yeah. yard average, uh, twelve That's weeks. Right. Yeah, twelve weeks. Deep. Patterson's average, I think, it's twenty nine and a half yards uh, per kickoff return. But here's the thing about Patterson, and we saw it at Thanksgiving Day game uh, at Detroit. He fielded it from seven yards deep. Yeah, he's the NFL record holder for longest kickoff return because he fielded it nine yards deep and has a 109-yarder. Randall Cobb is still upset, by the way, that with the Packers that he had the all-time record at 108 yards and then had it for less than a year because Patterson broke his record within a year. So um, beware of Cyber Monday. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Everybody have a great Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and we will be back with you next Real and Football Monday uh, to look ahead. The fourth quarter is just starting. Yeah. And our destiny is in our control. I mean, you oh, can wait, be excited about that. that. One. I want to write that <laughs> down. Uh, our, de- our destiny is in our control. Tyler Klutz, 2019. <laughs> for Tyler and Christy, I'm Brad. Thanks for joining us on Radio Heads. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?